Hey you guys, so this is the second video that I'm recording today. Um, I'm recording two videos today only because I've been slacking and um, my makeup tutorial that I recently made is still not uploading. So um, I'm going to give you guys two videos at once. So love me for that. Um, don't hate me. Don't hurt me. Um, I'm sorry that I've been slacking. But life happened once again. Like I was telling you on my last video, life happened. But life really did happen this time. Um, y'all, y'all, if y'all watched my recent video that I just recorded before this one, y'all understand where I'm coming from. Um, but anyway, just here, one more. <laughs> hey guys, and this is my coming out story. My last coming out story was in like 2014, so I'm re recreating my coming out story too so now i'm recreating two different videos i recreated my introducing myself and now i'm recreating my coming out story because my last coming out story i was kind of emotional no i was actually really emotional i was also young um my camera was horrible like horrible horrible and um i just didn't know what to say so basically this coming out story is going to be very 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 much positive i'm extremely happy that i'm actually redoing my coming out video um so yeah so with that being said um when i was about 14 15 no no no, no 13 14 i came out the first person i came out to was my grandma um when i came out to my grandma my grandma um was like <laughs> baby i already knew i knew before you knew which i was like well damn excuse me but um, my grandma was like the love of my life, like she's the person that I go to about everything. So I wasn't even surprised that she reacted the way that she reacted. She basically said, you know, I'ma love you regardless, I'ma love you no matter what. Um, this is your decision, this is your life. Um, you know, just be safe about everything that you do. Um and she just basically like, if you ever need to talk, you already know, you can come to me. So that went well. It wasn't even no crying or nothing. It, it went perfect it went exactly how i wanted everybody else to react but of course everyone else that i had that i told didn't react that way um because people can be assholes in life um so then i eventually i told my mom my mom reacted in a great way because i was dating this boy but the boy that i was dating was very long distance um out where he lives but i know he lives if he lived extremely far um but when i told her uber was really popular so i text her on uber like you know mom how would you feel if i was bisexual mind you i wasn't bisexual i was gay as hell <laughs> so but anyways i was like how would you feel if i was bisexual and she's like you know you'll still be my son i still love you no matter what blasey blasey so like i said that conversation went amazing too so She's just basically like, you know, use protection, be safe, and, you know, if I ever need to talk, same thing I'm going to talk to her. If I ever need to talk, you know, I can I can come to her. So, that, like I said, that went amazing, too. So, then the next person I kind of told was my dad's mom, which is my grandma. And I was like, you know, we was talking, and she's, like, really religious. Uh, my other grandma that said she knew I was gay is really religious, religious too, but she's religious in a different way. She believes man belongs to a woman, you should get married before you have kids, blah, blah, blah. So I brought it to her attention. She's like, you're not gay. You can't make that, dis that dis decision. Um, you don't know what you're talking about. That's nothing but the devil talking, blah, blah, blah. So she's that kind of Christian, you know, not really understanding. Um, so I pressed her off my shoulders. She still didn't. She was just denying that I was gay. So then one day I was sitting down. This story gets even worse. So one day I was sitting um, on my bed. And my dad comes to my grandma's house, which at the time I was living with my grandma. So my dad comes to my grandma's house, and I wasn't expecting him to come. So mind you, I had this cell phone that I wasn't supposed to have because I wasn't allowed to have cell phones. But my grandmother allowed me to have it when my dad wasn't around because I used I lied. I used to used to lie a lot, and I lied to her, and I was like, you know, I just want to play games and listen to music. So that's all I want to do because I'm just bored. I don't have friends. Mind you, 
I was sitting here dating the whole boy, texting guys and every like not guys, but texting boys and everything. Like I was, I was doing something totally different than what I said. So <clears throat> with that being said, when my dad came in, I threw the phone, but I didn't turn the phone off because usually when my dad comes, I turn the phone off so he won't hear the phone vibrate. So I turned it off. No, I didn't turn it off. I do it under my bed, mind you. I was in mid text, dog, and this is when Kick was around. So I was in mid text, and you know, on Kick. You can see when someone reads your message. Your message. So the person I was texting and seeing, I I read the message, but I didn't reply. So they texted me like, "Why are you not replying?" Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. Question mark. So the phone was just vibrating. So of course my dad found the phone. My dad like go. No, actually my dad told me to go downstairs before he even found the phone. So when he found the phone, um, he yelled downstairs like, "What's the password?" Da, 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 da. I'm like, "I don't know the password." He said, "Yes, you do. Stop effing lying to me. You know the password." Blah blah blah. So, I eventually gave him the password because, like I said, I was 14. I was afraid of my dad. So I gave him the password. He going through the phone. When he come downstairs, he do the phone. When he broke the phone. He like, "Really, really? This is what the f we do." Da 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 da. You supposed to be my son, and you sitting here doing stuff that's not. What not what I allow, not this is not how I raise you, you not no son of mine is gonna be gay, blah blah blah. So he said go upstairs. So I go upstairs or whatever. As soon as I turn around, I fell. So my dad hit me in the chest and I just fell. He like, This is what you do. Um, I'm embarrassed. Do you know uh, what this means? What he was like, um, what if people find out? That's my reputation. Blah blah blah. No son of mine gonna be gay. So he started hitting me and hitting me and hitting me and hitting me and hitting me. And then he kicked me in my stomach when I fell on the floor. And then he picked me up by my neck and it was like, I will fucking kill you in this house right now. You say here and you embarrass me. This is what you doing. Mind you, my dad was was Muslim, so he was like, This is what you doing for real, yo. He was like, so he threw me against the wall and then my grand so the so my grandma was trying to come in the room but my dad was holding the door closed and he was still hitting me and kicking me and everything. Basically I was being abused at this point because you're hit sitting here hitting me and kicking me. I can't breathe. I'm coughing, I'm crying, I'm screaming and you not stopping. You just blacked out. That's all. He just blacked out. So with that being said my grandma finally came in the room and was like, what's going on? And she, so he explains to her what's going on and she was still in denial. She's like, no, he's not gay. Just stop. Don't do that to him. Blah, blah, blah. So you still sitting here in denial. You sitting here, you heard everything that he did to me and you still sitting here, you letting this shit be okay. So my dad left. I, I was just furious. I was frustrated. I was upset. So I wrote him a note like, you know, <clears throat> You don't mean nothing. I basically say you don't mean nothing to me. You're nothing but a sperm donor. Um, all you are to me is Jonathan. I don't have nothing to say to you. Blah, blah, blah. So he read the note. Because I gave it to him. He read it. And he left. So he called my, my grandma later that day. And was, and was just crying on the phone. So of course my grandma takes his side. And was like, how, how could you sit here and do this to your father? Um, just no son does that to their, fa their father, blah, blah, blah. You should be ashamed of yourself. So, the next morning, I called my mom. I let my mom know what happened. My mom was like, you know what? This is it. I'm coming to get you to pack a bag. So, I pack a bag. And when I tell you, that was an overnight fucking bag, bitch. I had one pair of jeans, two t-shirts, two pair of underwear, some socks, and that's it. I left everything else. I didn't take nothing. I left everything else. Um, so, eventually, I was at my mom's. My dad, mom, which is my grandma, called, called the cops, like, um, reporting a missing child. And then when she found out that I was at my mom's house, she called, she called the cops back and told the cops that my mom kidnapped me. I'm like, are you serious, dog? So... I had to call her like, no, I called my mom. I told my mom to come get me. So my grandma, my grandma I'm like, oh no, Jonathan, you gotta go get him, which is my dad. So my dad like, no, that's where he wanna be. That's where he wanna be. Make a long story short, my dad disowned me. I'm not his son anymore. Um, I'm perfectly fine. I'm 
perfectly fine with that. Yes, it hurts from time to time, and yes, I think about it, and yes, I think, oh, well, let me call my dad, but he just owed me. That, I can't do nothing about that. Like, you're a grown-ass man. You're the father. I'm the child at the end of the day. So, with that being said, I haven't talked to my dad within, it been, was it, 13, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 6 years. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that. My little cousin came in the room. Uh, but like I said, it, it's been now 6 years since I have talked to my own father. Because he just owed me. Um, anyways. Um, I, so by this point of all that stuff happening with my grandma calling the cops... I done moved in with my mom, so <clears throat> the school I was going to, I was still, of course, in that school. So my mom moved, so I can still be able to go to that school. Um, I got everything, you know, changed. My area just everything changed to the new house that I was in, which was with my mom and my brothers. Now this is a story in itself with my coming out story. So now everyone in my mother's house knew that I was gay, um, but everybody wasn't okay with it um and the people that i'm talking about is my brothers um of course now we're fine we're cool they understand but then they did not because i used to fight and when i say i used to fight i used to fight almost every day my brothers used to call me out my name everything so i will always for and forever remember this fight i was sharing a room with one of my brothers and one day we was just sitting there and he got upset because I did something. I'm not exactly sure what I did, but all I know is that he ended up calling me a faggot. So, before I found myself and found out who I was, I used to react to everything in, in every little way, and all I knew was was to fight. So, um, when he called me a faggot, I snapped. <laughs> so... I don't know if you guys know, but you know, like, the little plastic basketball courts that, like, people, five-year-olds play with on Christmas. So, we had one of those in the room, and I picked it up, and I threw it at his head because I was so fucking frustrated. Um, <clears throat> and then we started fighting. So, when I fight, I don't fight fear, so we both had braces, but... What I did, and the thought that came in my mind was to take my fingers, put them in his mouth, and stretch his mouth open. So when I did that, he started bleeding. Because the braces cut his gums. And I just kept going. I seen the blood, and I just kept going. And his, one of the brackets got stuck on his gum. And I didn't care at that moment, because like I said, I blacked out. So... After that fight happened, that fight was done. And then me and him end up trading rooms and stuff. And I was sharing a room with my other little brother. And this is the other fight that I remember. It's the day that me and my other little brother was sitting. And he also called me a faggot. And <laughs> it hit me right here. Because I just started crying. Because I was angry. It hit me, it hit me right here. I just was crying. I just wanted to beat his ass. So I'm like, I'm not, so I started saying, I'm not fucking scared of you. If you want to fight, let's fight. Da -da 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 -da. He like, all right, so what's up? He got up. I got up. We started fighting. So everybody ran in the room and he grabbed, they grabbed him, but they didn't grab me. And I felt so type of way because I'm like, oh, y'all only give a fuck about him, but y'all don't care about me. So of course my mom called my phone like, why the fuck you pitch your hands on my effing son? Da -da -da -da. So, I just felt everybody in the house was against me. So, I didn't care who it was. I just wanted to fight. That's all I knew was I wanted to fight. So, I go outside. Like, yo, I ripped to so my friend. She lived across the street. So, she heard everything that was going on. She came and got me. I'm like, yo, all I want to do is fight. I don't care. So, I ended up staying like, at her house. So, then, um, it was just one big fight. Just one big fight. And I regret this fight to this day because it was a fight with my mom. It was a fight with my mom and my, my brother. So, 
and me and my brother was fighting. <laughs> my mom came in the room and she started hitting me. So I'm just, I'm basically fighting both of them at this point. And child, all I know is that I blacked out. We was fighting. I didn't care who was who. I was just swinging. But like I said, now that I think about it, now that I'm older, I regret fighting my mom because I don't care how old you are, who you are, you don't fight your parents, especially especially not your mother, because this is the lady who gave birth to you. So that's why I said, yes, my mom has done things that I don't like, but at the end of the day, it's still my mother. She gave birth to me. That means more than anything in this world is a mother giving birth to her child. And not a lot of people know their mothers, so that's a, and I know my mom, so like I said, this is why I regret it, and I respect my mom to this day, and I am deeply, deeply sorry that that even happened. Um, but that was one of the very last fights that I had ever gotten with anybody in the house because I had originally moved out and I had moved in with my best friend for like six months, and then I moved back with my mom because everything had calmed down. Um, Cause I was just over it. Like, I didn't want to fight anymore. I didn't have the energy to fight with everyone anymore. I was just tired. So I ended up moving my best friend. I ended up getting a job, getting my own phone, you know, doing things on my own. Um, me and my mom started talking again because at that moment we wasn't talking. But then we started talking a couple months after I moved out. Like, really started talking again. And I moved back and everything was good. And then some things started happening, but not as bad as... Well, I, was just, I just told you guys, but things started happening and I wasn't really appreciating it. Um, with that being said, I now live with my lovely aunt, Michelle Wilmer, um, in North Philly. And I just love it. Like, my life is amazing. Um, I can't complain about anything anymore. It's nothing for me to complain about unless it's something to do with myself personally or my boyfriend personally but other than that it's really nothing that I can complain about um if you guys know a friend that is being abused or think of, of a friend or you think that your friend is being abused please report it because that really takes a toll on someone because I after all that happened I went through depression and everything so it's not fun at all to go through depression by yourself and not be able to talk to people because I was able to talk to people about my feelings or anything for a long long time so please just make sure that everyone around you or whoever around you isn't going through stuff like this and if they are they're okay and like I said please report it because it's just it doesn't turn out pretty the, the whole situation is just going to be ugly all together and then trusting people is going to be hard because that's one thing I had to do I had to deal with and had to learn was how to trust people um the whole fighting thing that's also a big thing because then you want to fight everybody that you come across um over the littlest thing so just please be there for anyone that's going through this or Anyone that's going through anything that's abuse, that's depression, that's, you know, just anything. Just please be there for the person. Don't let them be alone. Because I also have thought about suicide multiple times. I don't think about it now because I got through it. But when I was going through these things for myself, I thought about suicide. I tried to attempt it also. But, and that's why I say, please please, please, please support your friends and make sure that they're okay. And even if they're not going through something, just text them. Hey, hey, love. Hey, babes. You cool? You okay? Because it's nothing like getting that text uh, from someone or that phone call. Are you okay? Are you cool? Even if you're not going through anything, because you know that there's someone out there that cares about you. So just, even if it's just one person, just, just check on them daily. Because it's not, like I said, it's nothing like having that one person who cares about you. But that's my coming out story. Um, I actually um, didn't tell the whole story and stretch the whole story out. I 
summed it down to what I can remember now because I kind of for forgot about everything that happened. Um, all the bad things because there's so many good things that's going on for me in life. So, but with that being said, please like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, follow me on Instagram and tell your friends and family about me. <coughs> yes, nasty cold that I'm getting over. But yes, thank you, babes, for all the support. Love you. Mwah.